happy Friday. It's Jennifer from the Somerset County Family Community Health Science Department. And we are live in our kitchen, ready to make pumpkin cookies. Okay. You can see okay? All right, I've prepared um, some of the ingredients ahead of time. Um, the main star of our pumpkin cookies, obviously, is pumpkin puree. So I have a bowl that I'm going to combine my wet ingredients. I have a little pumpkin puree left over from a class I did yesterday with the 4-H. We made pumpkin pudding. Basically, it was a vanilla pudding that we added some pumpkin puree and spice to it um, to kick it up a notch and give it that flavor. Um, so we're going to use a half of a cup of the pumpkin puree. So, right, this is pumpkin season getting to make a lot of great dishes and baked goods with pumpkin. Okay, so we have half a cup of pumpkin puree. I have one egg that I've already mixed. And I have one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna gently whisk, whisk this together and then set it aside. to the side. Um, I'm going to combine my dry ingredients. I have three quarters a cup of flour. You can use whole wheat flour if you wish. This is um, unbleached regular white flour. Um, then another star of our cookie that makes it really nutritious is whole grain oats. Um, these are old fashioned oats, not the quick oats. So they are um, the larger oats. We're going to use one and a half cup of the oats. So if you like granola bars, you're gonna love this cookie. Okay, so we have our flour, our oats. Um, we're gonna use two sugars. Uh, we're gonna have a quarter cup of just regular white granulated sugar. And then a quarter cup of dark brown sugar. I don't have dark brown sugar, so we're using light brown sugar. That actually um, doesn't matter. So you just want the, the variation. I'm just gonna spoon it because it is a little hard. A trick, a hack, I know we love our hacks in the kitchen. Um, my mom had always told me this hack. When your um, light or brown sugar is starting to get really, really hard, you can put a piece of bread in the bag of the sugar and the moisture just gets your sugar nice and moist. So. You don't, you have nice light sugar. So love a good kitchen hack. Remember guys, we are collecting our guide of kitchen hacks and tools. And our first topic is kitchen tools. So I want you to comment below. Last week you guys commented on some of your favorite kitchen tools. So we have our brown sugar, we have our regular sugar. Um, and now we're going to add our baking powder. Okay, we have a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. And we have a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Now this is a cakey cookie. It's not a cookie that um, is really going to spread or rise or get flat. It's going to kind of stay in the consistency. Um, we have a quarter cup of salt. We have a quarter cup of nutmeg. So now we're adding those really great fall spices in here. Ground cloves. If you don't have ground cloves, you can certainly use a quarter cup of allspice as well. And we're gonna take it up a notch with the cinnamon. We're gonna do one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. Okay, that just smells like fall. I'm just gonna gently mix this together. Now we're gonna add this to our wet ingredients. All right, so we're just gonna gently whisk this. I found when I made my, um, my first batch, it's a lot easier just to kind of get in there and use your hands like um, you're making meatballs. So that's actually what I'm gonna do. Oh, out of the whisk. This is a great kitchen tool, right? We use this a lot. 
All right, I'm going to just use my hands and get this all mixed together. And then we're gonna add a sweet ingredient to top this off. Okay. So I have my oven heating at 250 degrees and I've lined baking pans with parchment paper. Um, I've measured out a half a cup of chocolate chips and a half a cup of dried cranberries. Those are my add-ins, but you can totally have fun with um, butterscotch chips, you could use raisins, um, whatever add-ins that you like. I'm just gonna wash my hands here. You don't wanna over mix the dough. Like I said, the dough is gonna be thick because um, these are gonna be like cake-like cookies. So let's clear a space here. I have my parchment paper lined. And you're just gonna need to take like a tablespoon and it's just gonna be a basic drop cookie. So just about that and just drop it down. I don't know if you can see. Drop it down in the pan and they're not going to adjust. So you take the back of your spoon and just flatten it out slightly. Um, the original recipe, I'm gonna post this in the comments. The original recipe that I found this, it said it made 12 to 16 cookies. And um, those are kind of big cookies. So when I made my batch, I got about 20 cookies out of it. So using your um, teaspoon is the perfect size. And you can fit about 12 on a pan, 10 to 12. You just wanna space them out. Like I said, they're not going to really change. Oh, the aroma just smells so good in this kitchen. Right, you can eat these as a snack, a dessert after dinner, or quite frankly, even for breakfast, because you have the nutrition from the pumpkin and from the oats. Okay, just gonna finish lining this. Now the, um, the pumpkin pudding that I made yesterday with my class that I did, we did a virtual class, um, that was just a box of regular pudding and you just mix it as, you know, as indicated on the box with two cups of cold milk, and you add one cup of pumpkin puree um, from the can. And then um, a little bit of the spice. So the kids loved it. If you like pumpkin pie, you would love that as a sweet treat. And um, they all, one of the girls had a graham cracker shell, and she actually put her pudding into the little mini graham cracker shell and topped it with a little whipped cream, right? How smart is that? A chef, a budding chef on the way. Okay, so we've lined this on here. I'm gonna put it in the oven at 350 degrees. Okay. Now here is the finished product. I'll come close so that you guys can see. Okay, I'm gonna grab a good cookie here. So you can see you're gonna bake it in the oven for about 12 to 14 minutes. Um, just that it's cooked and slightly brown on the bottom. So it's not a perfect circle and that's fine for a cookie. Um, it really has the consistency of a granola bar with the oats, um, the moisture from the pumpkin, the moisture from the egg, um, the sweetness from the chocolate chips and the dried cranberries. So um, yeah, my family had tested this out. They really loved it. This is something fun that you can make in the kitchen with your kiddos. And if you like to read, I wanted to share this book with you. I, I highly recommend this book. It's called Pumpkin Day, and it is by um, Nancy Elizabeth Wallace. I just thought it was such a cute book, and I shared this with my class yesterday because it's about a rabbit family, and it takes them through the process of the farm, learning about how pumpkins grow and the shapes and the sizes, and then you take the pumpkin home, and what do you do with it? You carve it and then you roast the seeds and you eat the seeds and you make pumpkin pancakes and pumpkin muffin and pumpkin bread. Um, so that's really fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed the cookie recipe. I will share it in the comments below. If you could share in the comments below, I mentioned this last Tuesday when I was on uh, making the cauliflower soup using the immersion blender. Um, that's a favorite tool that I use a lot in the fall. We wanna hear from you. What is your favorite kitchen tool? 
So comment below. We're taking comments all the way through next Friday. I did bring my favorite to show you, which I had said was the microplane zester, right? It comes with the safety. And I use this for citrus, my lemon, my orange, my limes. I just put it in baked goods. I put it on salads, pastas, chicken, everything. So I mentioned it last week. I wanted to show it to you. Um, and if you're baking, you can also grate like um, chocolate. If you wanted to put, um, you know, if you were making a pumpkin bread and you wanted to put a little bit of chocolate on top or coconut, you can grind that up um, and use it for baking as well. So this is such a functional tool that I love in my kitchen. Um, so join us next week, next Friday, we're going to be talking about Halloween, getting ready for Halloween and making some fun Halloween treats that your kids and family will love, but they will be healthy. They'll be healthy and fun. Have a great weekend.